Hi, all right, let's consider our first example with uh, f solve, uh, which is here example 8.1. We're asked to solve the following system of equations, and we're told that there's two unique solutions. Please find both. Um, and then just um, as we you know, go ahead to solve it in MATLAB, you know, this is a case where we can actually solve uh, the problem sequentially. And in doing so, um, we can obtain the following uh, two sets of solutions. Uh, so x is 2.5, y is negative 3.75, and x is negative 4, and y is negative 7. Uh, so let's go to MATLAB, uh, attempt to solve this problem in fsolve, uh, and then compare to this to make sure that we get the correct solutions. All right, so here we now, uh, here we are now over in MATLAB, uh, and let's go ahead and solve this. And so I have my screen set up um, so that I can still see the system of equations from the text uh, below. So the first task that we are going to do is we're going to create an error function um, file for our system of equations. Okay, and so we're going to take our system of equations and we want to rewrite it as a system of error functions. And all we mean by that is, you know, a solution to this equation is, you know, the uh, a pair of y and x so that this equality is satisfied. Um, or alternatively, if we were to rewrite this to say y minus 1 half x plus 5, so take the right hand side and bring it over to the left, it'd be equivalent to you know, finding a y and x pair so that that equality holds, uh, where that equality is where that expression on the left uh, is equal to 0. Okay, and then kind of like f0, or f0 uh, when we have the system of equations set up, um, you can essentially think of it as MATLAB is going to keep guessing pairs of x and y uh, until our error functions evaluate to uh, zero. Okay. And, and so how we'll get this set up is just like before, we want to create a function. Uh, so the command will be, um, well, I'll click new script from the home tab. Okay. If I start with the signature, it's going to be function and then res. Um, fsolve expects a function with a single variable being returned. Uh, so the name, we'll just call this, say, airfunk, and I'll call it uh, ex1, for example, 1. Okay, and fsolve wants an air function with a single input variable. Uh, here, let's just call it capital X. Okay, great. Okay, and so now how I like to set things up is, okay, fsolve expects a function with a single input variable and a single output variable. So in this case, this input variable is going to be a vector, where a vector is going to contain the two variables that we're trying to solve for, here, y, and x. Okay? And so that vector, um, you know, the how I define things is completely up to me, um, but uh, one of the elements will correspond to y, the other will correspond to x. You're free to choose the order, uh, but you need to choose an order and then stick with it throughout the problem. Um, so let's say we want the first element to be y and second element to be x. What I like to do to facilitate my notation and try to minimize uh, any confusion is I first do what I call unpacking my vector. Okay, So I'm going to have a comment called unpack um, uh, input vector. And what I mean by that is if I want the first element of x to be y and then the second element to be a variable x, so lowercase, by unpacking, what I'm doing is I'm assigning to variable y the first element of x, and to variable x the second element of that big x vector. Okay, this way, when I set up my series of error functions, uh, the notation can look more similar to um, what it would actually look like on paper. Right? You don't need to do this. This is just something I do a lot because uh, it simplifies my, my notation uh, and helps prevent uh, me causing errors due to confusion. Right? And any steps you can do to uh, try and mini minimize the uh, uh, potential for errors is, uh, of course, uh, worth doing. Okay. So next, we need to compute our error functions. Okay. So I'm going to again do this in steps um, only because this is what I find easier. Okay. And so what I'll do first is uh, I'll assign to some variable res1 um, my the result of my first uh, error function. Okay, so my first error function will be uh, y uh, minus one half times x minus five. Then res two. Okay, my second error function will be y minus 
x squared minus 2x plus 15, okay? And I need to fix this, right? It's bringing this over to the left and that over to the left. Uh, so this is plus 5. Okay, so y minus x squared minus 2x plus 15. Okay, got it. Okay, so I just calculated uh, my two error functions. And then the last step, um, I'll call pack up um, res, is MATLAB expects or fsolve expects a function with a single output variable being returned. And so what I need to do is pack up my two error functions to a single variable uh, res to be returned. Okay. So, you know, doing the calculation in this way isn't necessary. I could have just called this res in parentheses 1 and res in parentheses 2. Um, but I like to break it down into little steps uh, just so I can understand the flow, and simplify my notation, and clearly understand what's going on. So documentation. Right, I can start with my function signature, but all that's really important here is this is our um, error function for use with fsolve, for example, uh, 81. Okay, and so I'll save it. Okay, so basic setup is fsolve is going to expect a function with a single input variable and a single output. That input variable, uh, in this case, will be a vector. Uh, where each element is going to correspond to uh, the variables we're trying to solve for, in this case, y and x. So the first thing I do to try and simplify my notation is to what I call unpack the input variable, our uh, input vector. And what I mean by that is assign the elements to uh, variables with names corresponding to the variables we're trying to solve for. Uh, then I compute uh, my two error functions, my system of error functions, uh, and then I pack it up. Right? And the idea we can have in our heads of what MATLAB is ultimately going to do with fsolve is it'll keep passing different values of x. By different values of x, we mean a uh, combination of y, x uh, estimates. And it's going to keep guessing at new values of that big vector until it returns a value of 0, until both of my error functions return to value as close to 0 as possible uh, as defined within uh, the tolerance. So then how the call works is... Okay, I'll store the result to some output variables, say SOL, uh, fsolve, okay, just like f0, I need to specify a function handle, which corresponds to the error function um, we want to use. Okay, and then our second argument is if you recall with f0, we could either provide initial estimate or brackets to search over. With fsolve, we can only provide initial estimates. Okay, and so when we provide initial estimates as well, we're going to need an initial estimate of both y and x. So we need to provide a vector corresponding to initial est estimate of, uh, in this case, y and then x. The order of our initial estimates agrees or must agree with the order uh, at which we unpack x. Okay, So within x, um, our first element's y, second is little x. So when we give initial estimates like this, this is corresponding to our initial estimate of y and our initial estimate of x. Just like when we get our solution, um, it's going to be a vector where the first element will correspond to our um, solution for y and then x. Right? And so this is why I say you're free to choose the order of your variables within that vector. But once you choose it, you need to stick to um, that throughout the entire problem. Okay. And so if I press return, um, we get an error message or a message that the equation was solved. Um, uh, we don't see an answer because I had a semicolon to suppress the output. Okay, so let me just you know, run it again, right? And we get negative 3.75, 2.5. Okay, so we get the first set of those roots um, that were provided um, in the problem statement that we had solved uh, analytically. So just like F0, when I solve, I will only get a single set of solutions, right? Remember with F0, every time I called, I only got a single solution or a single root if there were more than one. How you obtain more roots is you call, uh, well, in this case we call F solve again, with a different set of initial estimates. Okay, so what if my initial estimates were instead a 2 comma 1 instead of 1 comma 2? Okay, uh, same thing. Uh, 4 comma 1, oh, same thing, negative 4, 1, we're not doing so well, all right? We're still <laughs> getting um, the same result, OK? 
Okay. So um, one trick I like to do is I like to generate a different random and just a different random uh, initial estimates. And so essentially that's what I'm doing here, uh, albeit manually. Okay. Uh, and so what I mean by that is our initial estimate is going to be a vector of length two, where the first element is initial estimate of uh, y, and then initial estimate of x. So we can generate that vector using the rand command. Okay. So if I type rand one comma two, what this will produce is it's going to be a row vector. Uh, so it'll be a, a vector with a single row and two columns. And what rand does is it's a pseudo random number generator. Um, so pseudo, just it's not truly a random number generator. It has some uh, finite period, which is ginormous. Um, but anyways, uh, it'll generate a vector of length 2. Uh, each element will be a random number uh, uniformly distributed between 0 and 1. Okay, so if I type return, let's just, you know, say, um, I don't know, uh, x naught, right, if we're trying to generate some initial estimate, is rand 1, 2. Okay, so now they're going to be random numbers uniformly distributed between uh, 0 and 1. Okay. So if I were to take that and say multiply it by 10, okay, what's going to happen is rand uh, will be a vector of length 2 of two numbers uniformly distributed between uh, 0 and 1. So 10 times that vector, and now will essentially correspond to a vector of length 2 of two elements and both elements are random numbers uh, uniformly distributed between uh, 0 and 10. Okay, cool. And if I were to subtract, let's see, 5 from it, now it becomes a, a vector of uh, random numbers of length 2 uniformly distributed between uh, negative 5 and 5. Okay, so what I will often do is let me copy this. So if I come back up to my fsolve command, I could just replace that with that rand command. So every time I call it and run it, each time rand is using uh, or generating a unique set of random numbers. Okay, so I just saw the first time I ran it with rand, um, I got our solution that we had before, negative 3.75 and 2.5. Okay call it again with rand again, now I get negative 7 and 4, or let's see, where negative 7 and 4 corresponds to that second uh, set of roots. Okay, and so rather than just me uh, randomly guessing, uh, rand's a good technique, and uh, that you can just, you know, set this up and, and run. Okay, and even uh, well, one way you could do it to automate the process, you could put this in a for loop, you know, say I want to try 10 different iterations for each time it just uses some a different initial estimate uh, and you can generate uh, different solutions uh, each time and then just to, to see how many uh, unique sets you collect. Okay, um, but that is example one. Uh, let's wrap up here and we'll move on to the next example.